Hey guys, Jengar here. Welcome to today's premium review in which we are taking a look at the British Corsair F Mark II, a new British premium released in patch 1.75 La Resistance. The plane is sitting at 2.7 battle rating in both realistic battle and arcade, in which modes we flew the plane out of course as we do for all our premium reviews. And this really was a monster match. Especially the realistic match, but also the arcade match were really examples on how to use this plane. And this for me was really one of the, if not the best match I've ever flown. So if you usually like my flying, stick around because this is basically almost flawless. I had a lot of fun in this match and I was surprised that it actually went so well. Now let me give you some giveaways, my team is at the moment being slaughtered already and uh, they will be slaughtered even further until only me and a Wellington are left against 8 guys. We're not there yet but we are getting there soon, this tragic event was happening in no time. After that we will try to set things right <laughs> and we'll see if I manage to do that. Maximum speed in the Corsair is of course excellent. This is a fast plane at its battle rating. The maximum speed at sea level is 584 kilometers an hour. At 4500 meters it is 495 kilometers an hour. And at 6500 meters it is 450 kilometers an hour. As you saw the highest plane, the highest enemy was just taken out. Giving and the guy who took him out was taken out by his uh, rack. So um, yeah, we were left the highest plane in the game with all the enemies here below me. Which is a beautiful sight except for the fact that they are killing off my team. There is only one ally fighter left in the neighborhood and a Wellington who is on the way back to our airbase. And uh, yeah, we're gonna have to try to see what we can do here without losing our advantage. Because if we do that, we are basically fucked. Of course you know the Corsair is fantastic in a dive, it has a top speed of 840 km an hour for the red line and it lies somewhere around 910, 920 for the rip. I tested it but I crashed into the ground before I could rip it, uh, I came from almost 6000 meters, didn't quite reach the top speed uh, completely but it lies above 900 km an hour let's say. The stall speed in the plane is also quite good with 165 kilometers an hour. And the control stiffening here we get uh, hit by a, uh, a spraying Yak-7 who was almost within a kilometer and uh, well we didn't take any damage but it was a glancing hit and we heard it. Here we take out our first uh, guy here from those people who are down there. Taking out a lag tree which is quite nice. We're taking the plane back up and we're trying to keep our altitude advantage and our energy advantage on these enemies. Now in a dive, the handling on this plane is fantastic. It has almost no control stiffening. At 750 km an hour you notice a little bit of control stiffening but it stays very very maneuverable and the handling in a dive, the performance in a dive is really excellent so there is no real control stiffening as it is the firepower is good as we go for this yak 7 but he just gets out of the way just in time firepower is good like i said with 650 cals and the ammo load is great with around 390 rounds per gun that is not exactly right some guns hold a little bit more than others but it's uh, it's around that number now this i-16 is also just spraying at us and again we get one glancing hit which doesn't do any damage because probably the range is too far for him. And here we go. Yeah we do have a little bit of high speed on the flat but they do not break up until around 560 kilometers an hour. And we were only at 470, 480 so no danger there. We got a P40 behind us as we take out our third enemy. And we are going to take advantage now of the diving speed and performance of this plane. And the energy retention in this plane. Energy retention in the horizontal is excellent. In the vertical it's a little bit worse. It's average also due to the climb rate in the plane which is also average. This plane needs extensive side climbing. 
and is not the best in the vertical. But in the horizontal, this plane holds its speed very, very well. In that dive, uh, if you take it, the acceleration is excellent. And um, turn time is average again. Uh, you don't really want to turn fight in this plane. Even not with the flaps on, although they do make it a little better. Roll rate is good though, so that makes the maneuverability decent, especially at the higher speed. You could surprise a person in one or two turns, but after that turning is over. Rolling though works pretty well on the higher speeds, and if you can make somebody overshoot, that is fantastic. Uh, the thing is in this plane, people don't easily overshoot because of the uh, very good performance of this plane in the dive and the excellent energy retention. So people don't easily catch up to you. That's a problem in defensive flying for this plane. But uh, still you can slow the plane down easily with turning and you need to make a few turns here and there usually in uh, maneuvers to, uh, to get a rolling fight started. Now we miss this shot unfortunately, rolling over the top and uh, we're gonna let Nigel there go and we're gonna go for this Yak 7 who are, we are catching up to very very quickly. Now the overheating in this plane is very real it uh, definitely needs time to uh, cool off and if you keep flying at 100% at a certain point you will damage your engine and uh, you will be unable to uh, cool it off really so you need to go back to base at a certain point but if you keep it under control and you sometimes fly at uh, lower than 100% then you might be able to keep the plane cooled now we get a hit in and we damage the tail we also get damage though, and we also get damage in the engine. We're very close to our airfield though. That guy's elevator is damaged and he is actually going down there. I don't get the kill though, because as you saw, my uh, damage to the tail there that got this plane down was actually a hit and not a crit. And somebody else apparently critted him, so that guy got the kill. But he went down because of our damaged tail. So yeah. Uh, I would count that a kill as well for me. <laughs> but you know how it goes. Uh, War Thunder doesn't count it. As we are presented with another guy coming in. A lag 3 this time. As we're coming in. Now of course the Wellington was taken out at the airfield. So we basically are bringing the numbers down from a, a 1 versus 8. Although technically it was a, a, one, a 2 versus 8, but the Wellington really didn't do anything. Black 3 has the energy advantage, easily runs away from me and uh, we can't get him. I used stealth belts by the way on the 50 cals and I used a 600 meter convergence. Which works very nice for this plane, it uh, allows you to be uh, reasonably effective in close encounters. But it also keeps you very competitive at head-ons and stuff like that. Which are very necessary when you are uh, facing overwhelming odds. And uh, that's why I usually for wing mounted guns use a 600 meter convergence. Not too far out but also not too close like 300 meters which really gimps your longer range abilities. Which in a, uh, There we get another hit. We hit this guy uh, a few times already. We are not lucky here with our hits. We did get a hit on the tail here of the leg 3. Now with the other guy that meant that it crippled him and he went down uh, pretty quickly. But uh, this guy seems to still have uh, control. We ran away, a P40 joins the leg 3 and these are the last two opponents in the match. So we already brought down the odds from a 1 versus 8 to a 1 versus 2. Now you really at least I don't want to mess it up now. <laughs> this is one of the best turnarounds I ever did. And uh, this guy does a nice maneuver and uh, gets some shots in on me as he uh, slots in on my tail. But again, we have very, very excellent dive performance and speed. We picked up quite a nice bit of speed due to our acceleration and we were able to get away from both those planes. We, uh, I had to cut it here and there of course because all these long flight times are uh, could be boring for you but we crossed uh, halfway across the map to uh, make some distance between myself and them get some altitude back and now we are turning in to face these two guys again we're going in first for the lag 3 here we get a hit in and it does light a fire on my opponent which is very very good 
the P40 doesn't come up for me he continues straight out and he accelerates away the lag 3 is not coming back and with his ally in the neighborhood I took that for a critical damage and him trying to make it back to the airfield so I decided I could lose my altitude to get to the P40 take him out and uh, take care of the lag 3 later I might go for another uh, reload at the airfield which we already did one landing in the meantime after those four kills yeah he's definitely uh, going away and the P40 is trying to, uh, to get a shot here I don't get the right lead we take it up into the vertical again and we basically hold the upper hand here it would really be uh, my fault to uh, give this away here we almost do that but of course I do not let that happen I do not go into a all or nothing head on with this guy with me being in this kind of an advantage I still have the major upper hand in energy and in position now here we should have the the guy here to get a crit and there he goes now the lag 3 is nowhere to be seen that was our sixth official kill and the lag 3 goes down while landing as we have also landed winning us the game with seven kills and one guy shot down but we didn't get credit for them for him again not getting me my eight kills i never got above seven kills in realistic battle and again it didn't happen this time but you know in theory that was an eight kill match <laughs> and a one versus eight turnaround it was a magnificent match it took more than half an hour and it really was a joy to fly and really hooking me to this corsair again immediately i hadn't flown any of the low tier corsairs for a while and really a joy to fly this thing again in the meantime we jumped into arcade and we have managed to get an altitude position on the field with only this guy left on altitude so if we take well there's another buffalo there but if we take this guy out the higher altitudes are basically ours there he goes we have a, a commanding position here over the enemy half of the field buffalo is coming in i'm trying to pick up some speed before we get into this confrontation shooting out a long way we do get a glancing hit on our wing but no damage and uh, we take him out we take out this guy as he came up for us in the a6m2 after we killed the buffalo and now we have basically free reign we have a bomber spawning in and uh, attackers we can easily attack them and of course there is fighters that want to come up because i killed some of these guys the problem we do have though is that we have the airfield straight underneath us slight problem but uh, all in all not really a bother because i'm basically maneuvering between three and five thousand meters and um, yeah the uh, AA is not that effective there especially not at the longer ranges but it can still happen it could could have hit me but uh, yeah I, I've taken the risk you see uh, we are here all alone the rest of the fight is taking place in the middle of the map a little bit and uh, yeah we've got two guys coming in here a leg 3 and a D20 we're turning in to dive on them as they are both stalling out not very smart of these guys but uh, I'll take it here we go finishing it finishing it up now the Corsair of course is even more maneuverable the climb rate is a little bit better although you still will need your side climbing in this plane in arcade the roll rate is better the uh, turn rate is a little better the rudder is decent and all in all this plane is very competitive in arcade at its better rating really it can wreck havoc here and uh, as we're doing as we're doing fantastic look at that roll rate i mean it's pretty good in realistic already but excellent in arcade we get that blenheim 
people are being put in their lower tier planes now as we are still in our trusted Corsair very sturdy as well this plane it can take a few hits both in realistic and in arcade very nice and uh, yeah basically suited for the boom and zoom role mainly not really the best energy fighter but you can use it there it has good energy retention although the climb rate should be a little bit better but the acceleration is uh, is excellent and um, energy retention excellent in the horizontal not in the vertical but uh, yeah you can definitely use it as an energy fighter as well we got 11 kills in this uh, arcade match first place in the team very nice let's take a look at the rb scoreboard here which was really uh, fantastic i don't have premium right now and we still have this these kind of rewards very nice final blow survivor the last man standing and terror of the sky 127,000 silver lines and about 8,000 research points we're working on the whirlwind first place i'll see you in the conclusion Hey guys, so here we are after the match. Now after flying the Corsair out in both realistic battle and arcade, I can definitely say this is a no brainer to buy. I don't know if you have or have seen the Japanese Corsair at 2.7 battle rating. I have a review up on that one as well. Go check it out if you want for a second opinion. <laughs> but uh, the 2.7 premium Corsairs are amazing. And so is this plane. Of course, sometimes you get into a pickle and uh, if you're low and if you're slow in this plane, you will get picked off by enemy fighters. But if you keep this plane in the role it was intended for and use it to its strength, this plane can wreak absolute havoc and is nearly untouchable at that battle rating. Excellent plane and uh, definitely worth it at the price. I thought it was 1350 or 1150. I don't remember. I bought it, didn't really look at the price as I had bought some uh, Golden Eagles but uh, yeah I, a Corsair at 2.7 for me is a no-brainer and I didn't really check it but I think it was 1350 good price for this plane absolutely worth it especially if you're still working on the British 3 guys I hope you enjoyed the video I want to thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys next time bye bye if you're new here make sure to hit the subscribe button Become part of this community. If you are already a subscriber, don't forget to like the video, do leave me a comment, and if you really feel like helping out today, make sure to share the video with your friends and let them know about the channel.